I would like to thank the organizers uh, for having me here and uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, 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 presenting uh, results from our recent uh, uh, work, uh, works by our group and uh, our collaborators. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, spin vibronic interactions in SMH top uh, free radicals or open shell molecules. I'm also going to show you how the, uh, these uh, spin uh, vibronic interactions can change the uh, vibrational branching ratios and the rotational branching ratios. Uh, so the ultimate goal of our research is twofold. First, we want to develop some experimental methods that we can, so that we can measure the vibrational and the rotational ratios uh, very accurately. But at the same time, we also want to, one day, hopefully, we can, uh, we can predict uh, these uh, uh, rotational and vibrational branching ratios accurately uh, based on initial calculations and uh, using molecular spectroscopy theory. Uh, so, uh, in the previous talk by Lan, uh, we learned that uh, calcium uh, monohydroxide or alkaline earth monohydroxide free radicals in general uh, has uh, orbitally doubly degenerate excited state, the first excited state, uh, which is uh, uh, subject to both uh, vibronic interaction and the spin orbit uh, interaction. That vibronic interaction is uh, uh, proportional to the normal uh, coordinate squared, so it's quadratic, and it's called a uh, Ronatella effect. So if you replace uh, the hydrogen uh, atom with a, a methyl group, you get a calcium uh, methoxide, which is a symmetric top um, uh, belonging to the uh, C3V uh, point group. Uh, you can go one step further, uh, do either single uh, or double methyl substitution, then you have uh, uh, calcium S oxide and the calcium isoproxide. These two are SMH top molecules, uh, uh, but they do still have a reflection plane. They belong to the CS, uh, uh, CS uh, point uh, group. If you uh, break enough, you can continue this trend and then get a C1 molecules, which do not have any uh, 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 symmetry operations, right? So all these molecules, their uh, uh, potential energy surfaces are very complicated, uh, peculiar. Uh, so the upper and the lower components of the A state, they meet at the so-called conical intersection. But just like in calcium uh, CLOH, uh, these two uh, potential energy surface sheets are also separated by the spin orbit uh, uh, splitting. So how can we uh, start? Oh, another interesting thing is uh, going from uh, uh, S as oxide to isopropoxide, the symmetry, uh, symmetry of the electronic wave function actually uh, is a swap from A double prime to A prime and vice versa. Now how to understand the, uh, the uh, spin vibronic uh, uh, structure? Uh, just like uh, Len, Len uh, did, uh, we need to construct a big uh, spin vibronic Hamiltonian. Um, uh, in, this, in this case, uh, the Hamiltonian has a, a kinetic part and a potential part. Uh, the potential part, we can expand it in uh, normal coordinates at the uh, exostate, ground state equilibrium. Uh, the basis that we use is a direct product of a sigma and a lambda, where sigma is the projection of uh, electron spin, and lambda is the uh, projection of uh, the orbital, uh, wave, orbital wave function. So um, uh, first, we Ha have uh, uh, delta E A1, A2 here, uh, which is the separation between the A1 state and the A2 state, the upper sheet and the lower sheet, without a, a spin orbit interaction. In general, we call it delta E naught. Uh, and then we have the spin orbit interaction. Uh, so uh, the overall separation of the uh, A1 and the A2 state uh, has contributions from both delta E naught and uh, the spin orbit interaction. Uh, the spin orbit interaction constant here uh, for uh, nonlinear polyatomic molecules is called A zeta E D. A is the atomic like spin orbit constant, uh, zeta E is the electronic quenching factor, and D is the vibronic quenching factor. Uh, the overall uh, uh, separation can be calculated using this uh, simple equation here. Now, when you expand the potential energy uh, uh, part uh, at the normal coordinates, uh, of course, you will have a, the harmonic oscillator part, right, which is proportional to Q squared. But you will also have uh, 
uh, linear vibronic coupling. We call that the Young Teller uh, effect or linear Young Teller effect to be exact. Ironically, uh, linear molecules do not have a linear vibronic interaction uh, as, as Len showed. Uh, we actually also need to include, we did include uh, uh, quadratic and uh, bilinear uh, vibronic interaction terms in the uh, spectroscopy model, although we, we're not showing here for uh, clarity. Uh, finally, the three electronic states we, in, uh, we included here, A1, A2, and the neighboring B state, they're coupled to each other through, uh, again, a, line, a linear uh, vibrant interaction. We call that a pseudo Young Teller effect because mathematically they have a, a very close uh, uh, forms uh, to Young Teller interaction, but they're just connecting different electronic states there. Now, given all this, we can look at uh, the experimental results here. Uh, immediately, uh, this is the uh, laser-induced fluorescence excitation spectrum of the X to A transition of uh, uh, calcium uh, methoxide. Immediately, you see a few uh, doublets there. Uh, these are transitions from the ground vibrational level of the ground electronic state to the uh, uh, vibrational levels of the A state, split by the spin orbit uh, inter interaction there. Now, given these uh, 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 beautiful results from initial calculations, it's not difficult to assign these transitions uh, uh, to different vibrational levels. Uh, of course, the strongest transitions are due to transitions to the CLO uh, stretch um, uh, mode because it has the largest frank condom factor. Um, now, but uh, when we're doing experiment, we're worried that uh, because we're using uh, pulse lasers, the uh, strong origin transition might be saturated. So my students also took uh, cavity ring down spectrum of the X to A transition. Uh, then we compared the LF spectrum to the cavity ring down spectrum. We found that uh, uh, the origin band was uh, power saturated by a factor of about 3.6 there. Uh, so after the correction, we also assume that uh, the uh, frank condon factors for the X to A origin transition uh, and the A to X emission transition, they are the same. And this is a, if you do the math, you will find that this is uh, valid uh, if uh, X state and A state are isolated from other electronic states. So given all this, uh, when we published the, pa published the paper, we predicted that uh, the average number of uh, 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 scattered photons for a single uh, molecule before it falls to a dark state is about 84. And uh, I think one year after the paper, John's group uh, uh, did experiment and found that uh, the uh, experimental value is 110. I think uh, um, uh, we were pretty close, with, at least within the era bus. You know, as uh, I was a uh, bragging about our success, some of you might be wondering, oh, what, by the way, what's going on here, right? Why, why the calculations did not predict any transitions uh, are there? Now, this is because this is a transition to the mu-8 mode, uh, which, which is uh, uh, calcium oxygen uh, uh, methyl group uh, uh, bending. This is an asymmetric uh, 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 mode. So um, under the Bornheimer approximation and, uh, uh, and the harmonic oscillator uh, approximation, the Franken factor should be zero. And uh, that's what we got. Although we have a little bit uh, intensity here uh, on the order of 10 to minus 5. You know, as Lance said, uh, we molecular spectroscopists usually don't care about it at all. But you are MO physicists, you know, you have much higher sensitivity and, uh, and uh, uh, precision. Then after that, we step by step, we included different uh, coupling terms. For example, when we include uh, the uh, linear Young Teller interaction, a spin orbit interaction between the uh, two uh, the spin orbit components, uh, the intensity increased uh, to uh, 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 ten, 10 to minus three there. So it's still one order of magnitude lower than the uh, experimental results there. So we decided uh, let's try uh, including the couple, uh, coupling terms between the A state and the B state that uh, uh, brought the uh, intensity up. But surprisingly, uh, we found that the biggest contribution actually is from the is due to the uh, spin orbit coupling between the A state and the X state. Uh, at, at this mo at, at, at this moment, the calculated result is still is only 50 percent of the experimental result. And that might be due to the uh, coupling between the X state and the A state. Uh, hopefully, we'll have time, we will have time to include the data into our code as well. Now, the same uh, program can also predict uh, the complicated 
energy level structure of the mu-8 uh, 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 level uh, so that in the future, if we can get a higher resolution in our experimental work, we can use uh, the experimental spectrum to benchmark our calculations here. Uh, after uh, calcium methoxide, we move on to calcium S-oxide and isopropoxide. Uh, we found that uh, the overall A1, A2 separation is almost the same for all three molecules. Uh, but the calculation shows that uh, the data E0 is quite different for these three molecules. Uh, now, uh, unfortunately, if you only have a vibronic, uh, uh, vibronic uh, res resolution, uh, you cannot separate the data E0 and AZA ED because both of them split the A1, A2 levels. But if you have a, a rotational and a fine structure uh, resolved, you, uh, you can separate uh, and determine these uh, two contributions separately, as will be explained in part two of this talk. Um, so here I use, uh, I use uh, the Gauche uh, uh, conformer of uh, calcium iso. Uh, calcium one propoxide as example because it's a C1 molecule. Now the rotational part, we can uh, represent that using the uh, rotational ellipsoid there. Uh, and uh, because the unpaired electron is localized on a uh, calcium uh, 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 atom, so we can assume that uh, the orbital angular momentum is along the CAO direction. And because the uh, CAO, uh, uh, CAO axial uh, bending, uh, is the dominant uh, young teller active uh, mode. We can also assume that the vibrational angular momentum is along the same direction. Then we can project uh, orbital, uh, vibrational, and a spin angular momentum to these uh, three principal axes. And uh, by counting all the angular uh, momentum interactions and uh, the uh, action rules of uh, angular momentum operators, we can figure out uh, the um, effective rotational Hamiltonian, which has a, a rotational part, a uh, Coriolis interaction part, spin orbital part, uh, spin rotation part, and you have the vibronic quenching data uh, E uh, naught. Uh, the Young-Teller interaction, as uh, we just uh, discussed, actually uh, introduces uh, uh, L-type uh, doubling as well. And finally, we have a, a centrifugal uh, distortion uh, term there. Uh, now, I want to say a few words about the spin uh, rotation interaction, because most of the time, when we simulate a rotational, uh, a rotational resolved spectra of uh, polyatomic molecules, we have the rotational part and the spin rotation part. Uh, but actually, the, the dominant, in most of the cases, the dominant contribution to the spin orbit, spin, sorry, spin rotation constant is due to the uh, cross term of a spin uh, orbital term and uh, the Coriolis term. Now, I know ML physicists like uh, uh, equations, uh, but uh, as a pseudo physicist, I like to use uh, simple diagrams here. So the spin orbit interaction is due to the coupling between orbital angular momentum and uh, electron spin. Coriolis interaction is the coupling between molecular uh, nuclear vibration and the nuclear rotation, right? So if you take a spin from the spin orbital interaction, you take the uh, a rotational part from the Coriolis interaction, you get a spin rotation interaction. Now, here, uh, these equations are derived uh, using second order perturbation theory, but the second order perturbation treatment uh, will break down if uh, the A1 and the A2 states are close to each other, quasi-degenerated, and the separation is dominated by spin orbit interaction. Uh, so unfortunately, at this moment, we still do not have a rotationally resolved uh, spectra of a calcium S oxide or isoproxide. But uh, um, we can use this uh, um, model to uh, study uh, to resolve a long-standing mis uh, mystery of uh, alkoxy radicals. So alkoxy radicals are similar to uh, calcium uh, uh, monooxide alkoxide molecules in a sense that uh, their ground and the first excited electronic states are uh, 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 quasi-degenerate. Uh, the B state here is uh, relative, uh, is well uh, isolated from other electronic states. So going from uh, uh, calcium uh, Methoxide to uh, methoxy radical, you basically flip uh, these uh, two groups of uh, electronic states. And for pri uh, secondary alkoxy radicals, uh, the energy splitting is also 60, at the most 100 wave number. So they're strongly coupled to each other. Uh, so uh, 
terrorist group at Ohio State actually took these uh, spectra in the year 2000s, but before we, until we develop the, this, uh, what we call the two, uh, couple of the two state model, we were not able to, nobody was able to simulate uh, the, uh, the spectra. But finally, by applying the, by using the model, you can see that we were able to reach uh, uh, almost line to line match uh, for this relatively uh, com complex uh, molecule. This is the X to B trans tr transi transition. Uh, the A to B transition is, uh, is for technical reasons, not very well resolved, but we were able to uh, uh, reproduce the rotational contour. You can see that now we can determine delta E naught and A zeta E D pretty accurately. Now, a better example is uh, cyclohexoxy. Uh, for a reason I cannot explain here, I don't have time to explain here, uh, they were able to um, uh, obtain both uh, X to B and A to B transitions uh, with uh, a good resolution, uh, but because this larger molecule, the signal to noise ratio is not that good. Uh, but we were able to simulate uh, both bands there, and uh, when, you, you, when you use the, 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 the rotational uh, uh, model, you can tune the uh, spin orbit interaction constant from zero to the uh, <coughs> X, uh, AX separation. And you can see how the two states are mixed to each other. And uh, one of these simulations uh, uh, <coughs> reproduced the experimental results uh, the, the, the best. And uh, <coughs> at that value, the X and the A, or the A prime and the A double prime uh, wave functions are mixed by about 10%. But you can see that uh, it uh, caused a uh, significant difference in uh, uh, simulation. So I used the same model earlier this year uh, to simulate, uh, uh, to, pre to, to, to predict the rotational uh, branching ratios of calcium S oxide. And you can see that uh, it's uh, uh, definitely more complicated than calcium. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is S oxide, sorry. Uh, definitely more complicated calcium mass oxide, and hopefully we'll have uh, experimental results to benchmark our, our uh, prediction. Now, uh, I don't know how many minutes I still have. Um, quite, quite, uh, quite a few minutes. Oh, quite a few minutes, okay, that's good. So uh, our, uh, the part of three of this talk is about our current effort to experimentally determine our rotational uh, branching ratios. Uh, as I uh, said we were using pulsed lasers uh, to do laser induced fluorescence, dispersed fluorescence, cavity uh, ring down. Uh, so our resolution is limited by the resolution of the laser. Um, but uh, uh, we do have uh, two ring lasers, one dye ring laser, one touch type eye ring laser. So we have ready to set up uh, both lasers and build uh, the uh, frequency calibration system using an etalon for relative calibration, uh, using the Doppler free saturation absorption um, spectroscopy of uh, adding for uh, absolute calibration. Uh, so as a proof of uh, principle, I'm showing the uh, experimentally obtained uh, uh, etalon fringes and uh, iodine spectrum compared to atlas. Now, my students are also developing a new uh, experimental technique, what we call cavity-enhanced double resonance spectroscopy. Basically, you use, you use one laser to excite the excite molecules from ground state to an intermediate state, and then the second laser uh, <coughs> can either uh, further pump uh, these molecules to an even higher energy level or if its wavelength is longer than the first laser, uh, you can use that to dump the molecules uh, to, um, uh, to the ground vibrational uh, uh, level, levels. Uh, if this is a pump, repump uh, uh, scheme, then the ring down time uh, of uh, the prop laser, the second label is, uh, laser is going to uh, decrease because you have more absorption there, right? So if it's uh, a uh, stimulated emission pumping scheme, SCP scheme, then the cavity ring, the ring down time is going to increase uh, because this, uh, this configuration gives you uh, a stimulated emission. You're gonna have more photons coming out uh, than uh, in the case of uh, uh, empty cavity. Uh, so by scanning, by fixing the first laser to a transition, and uh, scanning the frequency of the second laser, you can get a spectrum like that. A positive signal, a positive absorption would be what we call double resonance cavity ring down, and a negative signal is uh, a stimulated emission pumping cavity ring up, right? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is a very simplistic uh, um, uh, 
uh, uh, scheme for the experimental setup. We already have an uh, X-shaped uh, uh, dual frequency or dual wavelength uh, uh, cavity there. Uh, so one of the cavities is going to be locked to the laser, and the laser should be locked to a uh, transition uh, frequency. And the second laser is for cavity ring down or cavity ring up measurement. In the long run, uh, we also want to combine uh, this uh, uh, experimental setup with a uh, uh, jet cooled uh, uh, supersonic uh, jet expansion. If uh, suddenly, I, for whatever reason, we become very rich, we probably want to also build a, a buffer gas cooling system. But that's beyond our dream at this moment. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, my students were, were work, working very hard in lab. Uh, they got, uh, uh, we also have a three micron CW OPO. They got double free saturated absorption uh, spectra of uh, methane. Uh, and we also locked OPO to, the, to, the, to that uh, uh, narrow line. Uh, meanwhile, uh, they got uh, the uh, uh, continuous wave uh, cavity ring down uh, spectrum of uh, uh, water of, of vapor. So you know the learning curve uh, usually for these kind of, uh, uh, for chemistry students can be, uh, can be uh, very long, but I'm very proud of them that they're making a lot of progress in the lab. Uh, so finally, to summarize, we have built a two, developed a two models, spectroscopy models, one for spin vibronic analysis, the other for uh, rotational and fine structure analysis. Using these two models, we can simulate uh, fit uh, uh, um, uh, uh, experimental spectra of uh, uh, candidate molecules for direct uh, laser cooling, like uh, uh, alkaline earth uh, monooxide radicals. We can also use them to predict uh, vibrational and rotational uh, branching ratios. Uh, in the future, uh, we want to use the uh, ring lasers to take uh, air life, uh, hydrogen air life, uh, uh, and the cavity ring down spectra. Now, especially we want to uh, uh, reach the mu-8 level of the A state because that state is very sensitive to uh, vibronic interactions and the spin orbit interaction. And uh, 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 <clears throat> for um, molecules uh, with a CS symmetry, like uh, uh, S oxide, isoproxide, uh, by, uh, by resolving the X to A origin band, we can separate and uh, determine the data E not a term and uh, the as a the ED term, which would be wonderful. And uh, 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 with the future uh, SEP cavity ring up setup, uh, we want to study row vibrational level of ground electronic states and uh, uh, determine the uh, determine the uh, rotational uh, branching ratio with good accuracy. I would like to thank my collaborator at Ohio State, Terry Miller. And uh, Kate and Terry, I think he's already in his uh, mid, probably late 80s. Uh, he still works like a graduate student. Uh, Lanchen <laughs> helped us a lot with the spin orbiter calculations. And uh, these, uh, uh, these are funny agents that have supported us. And I thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Weak transitions meaning uh, transitions that uh, borrow intensity through vibronic or spin orbit interactions. Uh, in, in, in these molecules, when talking about uh, the, 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 the most important ones is the bending modes there. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the dominant uh, young teller or pseudo young teller active modes. So for this methoxy molecule, there are so many of these bending modes, there are so many hydrogen atoms around. So mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I'm not a hardcore computational chemist. No, I, deal, I dealt with uh, uh, young molecules before. Uh, 
the way I found uh, the uh, the the modes that you are, you are talking about is uh, I compare if it's if it's a X to A transition, I just compare. Let's say this is X state, this is A state, this is B state. Uh, I just compare their uh, geometry, uh, the, the geometries of these three states, and that gives you some hint of uh, uh, what are the uh, modes that might 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 uh, lead to uh, intensity borrowing. So Lantern probably can give a better result, a get better answer. That's how I found the, them. Other questions? So I just I had a question. So you mm -hmm. actually already predicted the rotational structure, but you mentioned it, it wasn't resolved, right? So um, generally, I know like <coughs> how good do you do you expect the prediction of? You're talking about this one here. Yeah, yeah, rotational structure to be when it will get. Well, You're talking about intensity accuracy there. Positions and intensity wise is only if you have similar like intuition or feeling uh -huh. on other molecules, right? Based on other molecules. Uh, I first uh, the the prediction I did here. Uh, I used the initial calculated uh, uh, rotational constants and the spin orbit uh, uh, constant there. Mm -hmm. So one probably the most uh, there, there are two advantages of the so-called two, two most important advantages of so-called coupled two-state uh, model. First, uh, uh, because data E naught, the vibronic quenching does not change uh, the rotation on the fine structure. It simply push these uh, two states away from each other, while the spin orbit interaction uh, uh, does change uh, 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 rotational uh, uh, structure, so you can separate them. Uh, the other one is, uh, as far as I know, again, I'm not a hardcore computational chemist, but as far as I know, it's more difficult to calculate the spin, much more difficult to calculate the spin rotation uh, constants than spin orbital, uh, spin orbital uh, constants. But uh, using our model, you don't need to use uh, 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 spin uh, rotation constants anymore. You can just use a uh, uh, spin orbital constant, that we, which, uh, uh, again, you can calculate with much better accuracy. And uh, when it comes to Coriolis interaction, uh, you can assume that uh, in the case of, uh, if the interaction is not so strong, the uh, Coriolis coupling constant can be predicted using the spin uh, orbit constant because the Coriolis constant uh, is the expectation value of orbital angular momentum plus vibrational angular momentum. Uh, while uh, zeta e in the a zeta e d, the effective spin orbit constant is just expectation value of l. So there, there you can make very good uh, assumptions uh, 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 and find out the relation between zeta e and zeta t. And we did that to simulate uh, our coxy spectra. Okay. Are you asking inside the molecule, what are the mechanisms that are going to change the rotational branching ratio? Uh, <clears throat> that's a very good question. There are a lot of things uh, for the molecules that, sorry, I have a lot of hidden slides there. Uh, for the molecules we're talking about, uh, the most important, uh, compared to a standard model, uh, spectral skin model with only rotational part and the spin uh, rotation part, uh, when you have uh, quasi degenerate states, there are two coupling um, uh, uh, mechanisms that change the rotation of fine structure. One is a spin orbit, uh, spin orbit interaction. The other is a Coriolis interaction. And uh, uh, like for calcium, calcium uh, mass oxide, the former probably is like 100 times or more important than the latter. So um, Probably can give a better answer if I think more carefully, but at this moment I think a spin orbit interaction compared to the overall A1, A2 separation is the most important factor that you need to consider. Thank you.